So we wish we had some buttons to turn animation on and off. And so here I've added the buttons here. I've done that in the HTML, right? Because putting things onto the page is an HTML thing. So we have the yellow slider, a little bit of text, and then a couple of buttons. Those buttons have been hooked up. Uh, we have a function for hooking up all of our HTML UI actions. So this is where we had our sliders. And so I've now hooked up those buttons. Um, and they had the names yellow off button and yellow on button. And what do those buttons do? They're just setting a global variable that tells me, is my yellow animation going true or false? And like all my UI, I have some globals that are related to these, these UI elements. And then down inside my render all shapes function, where we had our yellow animation, we had two options. We had one option, which was to uh, use some kind of math related to the seconds as we're animating, and we had some option to use the angle from the slider. And I've just put an if statement now that's using this. And so we should be able to see how, the, how this works. So if I turn on animation, I'm now using the animation. I can still control the magenta, or I can turn off the animation, and I can control the magenta, and I, and I control, I'll control the slider. Now there is something that's going to be to be a little bit of a mess. If we want to turn on and off our different animated components separately, um, then we're going to end up with a bunch of these variables and a bunch of if statements embedded into my render all shapes. And I think it's going to make my rendering shapes to be kind of messy. I kind of wish I just had an angle, which is the current angle, and then I could render based on that. There's another reason. If we look at the way the behavior is, let's turn this animation on. Whenever I turn this off, it doesn't stay where it's at. It goes to wherever the last angle was, right? So if I set my angle way over here on the right, turn on my animation, and I'm going, and now when it's going to get over here to the left, I'm going to shut it off, and boom, it's going to flash back over here to the right where, where I was. And this may or may not be the behavior that you want, um, but let's say that it's not the behavior. We wish that it stayed where it was when we turned off. So what we really want to do is have some function which allows us to update the state of the angles, um, but doesn't immediately flash back to the last thing of the slider. So here I've changed my code back. I've commented out this if statement because I think it's going to get messy if I have lots of these. And also I don't like the logic of the animation being mixed up with the logic of the rendering. This is my render function. I really don't wish I had my animation logic together in the same function because two conceptually different things are pushed together. So I've gone back to just having a single thing that just says whatever is the current state of the angle, I'm going to render using that. And I'm going to put the logic for how to do the animation someplace else. So if we scroll up, I've now created myself a new function. So this function is update the animation angle. And so it's going to have the logic for what to do. So this is going to, I'm going to put all of my different angles that I'm updating into, into this function. So if my yellow animation is on, then I'm going to set the yellow angle to whatever I want it to be set to. And I'm just using the same variable that I had hooked up to my slider. So if the slider moves, it's going to try to set it. If my animation is on, it's going to set it. And when it comes time to render, I just use whichever angle it was. Now, of course, we have to update these animation angles. So I'm going to put that in my tick function. So whenever we get around to animating, we check the current time, we update all of our angles, and then we render everything, and then we tell it go around and, and do it again. And if we update anything with sliders, it's going to just call this render, and it's not going to mess with animation angles during the, during the update of the sliders. So let's take a look at what goes on with that. So now I turn on my animation. When I turn it off, it stays in the position it was because it doesn't immediately snap back to the slider. I still have control of the, of the top. And so my, my organization and my code is a little better. My, my uh, interaction is a little bit better. The only thing I don't like is because I used mouse move, I didn't click, but I just got my mouse on top of this yellow slider and immediately snapped it. So this is because I had the on mouse move as my hookup. I don't like this. I don't know how to fix it. When somebody figures it out, please post it into Piazza. I really wish I had to click down and slide this in order to make it flash and update. So I've now hooked up some additional buttons because I want to animate the magenta um, item also. So in my update animation angles, this is where I've set it up. So I've just added the buttons and added the variables to hook it up. So if my magenta animation is on, I'm going to go set the magenta angle. Um, and I've changed it a little bit. I've put a times three, so it's going to run a little bit faster. And inside render shapes, well, I didn't have to do anything at all. Um, because I was already using the magenta angle to do the rendering, right? So the animation logic is somehow isolated from the rendering logic. To add the animation, I didn't have to do anything to my, to my rendering. So let's go take a look at how this works.
So uh, we can still, of course, rotate our whole our whole shape around. We can turn on animation for the yellow, and this is going to go. And we can we can we can still control this manually. But if we turn on animation for magenta, now it's going to run automatically too. And we can turn off the yellow and keep the magenta going, as you would expect. All of these things can work together.